OKX, the second biggest crypto exchange, just announced the launch of X1, a ZK-powered Layer 2 blockchain built using the Polygon CDK. In this video, I'll explain what the announcement is, how the chain works at a technical level, and quickly show you through a demo of how you can get started using this new X1 chain. As always, like the video if you enjoy this content, subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss any more videos like this one. Let's get into it. Here is the announcement tweet. It basically says we're thrilled to introduce introduce X1, which is our new Ethereum L2 network built on Polygon CDK. Now I've already received a couple DMs about the technical details of the X1 chain and how it works. So I thought I would cover off the key points in this video here. The first one is that this is built using the Polygon CDK, which is the chain development kit. Now I have this video on my channel if you're interested in what the CDK is and how you can even build your own chain in a couple of minutes. Essentially the CDK is a modular set of tools that give you the pieces of the puzzle to create your own ZK EVM in either a rollup or validium mode. Given it is a ZK EVM, and if you've seen this video on my channel, you'll know that there are different kinds of ZK EVMs or different types as Vitalik kind of categorized them into type one to type four. The OKX X1 chain is going to use the type two prover, which is the same prover that is being built to power the Polygon ZK EVM. The X1 chain is going to be in Validium mode rather than the rollup mode, which essentially just means that not all of the transaction data is going to be posted to L1 in this case, which is Ethereum. So essentially the ZK proofs will be posted to Ethereum and not all of the transaction data. So this is kind of opting for a more scalable solution instead of opting for that full security where you post all of the transaction data back, which is essentially making the chain a lot cheaper to use over opting for that rollup mode. Interesting thing about the X1 chain is that it's actually using OKX's token, which is OKB, as the native token that is going to be used for gas fees in the actual chain itself. What that means is when you're performing actions like deploy a smart contract or mint an NFT or transfer tokens, you're going to be paying for those transactions in OKB token as the gas fees over what you would be doing when you're using Polygon ZK EVM, where you would use ETH as the native gas token, for example. So to summarize, it's a type two ZK EVM Validium. If you don't know what type two means, check out the first video that will be linked in the description. If you don't know what a Validium is, check out the second video that will be linked in the description. And that's really all that you need to know is that it's going to post type two zero knowledge proofs to Ethereum as the layer one, and it's going to be running in Validium mode, which means it's not paying those kind of substantial fees to post all transaction data over to Ethereum. It's just going to keep that internally in that kind of layer two and use those data availability committees when those are made available. And if you've ever watched any videos on my channel, you know, given it's a EVM compatible chain, this makes it very simple for us to actually go ahead and use all of the tools we're familiar with. So with that said, what we're gonna show you next is what the process looks like to actually build a smart contract, deploy your smart contract and create an application on top of this new X1 chain. Of course, we're gonna use EVM kit. This is a kind of suite of tools that I've combined together to create full stack web three applications. I also have another video on this on my channel. If you wanna check it out, that'll be linked in the description. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a full stack web three project, set it up onto the X1 network, deploy our smart contract and connect our front end application to the X1 network and the smart contract that we just deployed. So I'm just gonna quickly run through the documentation and the getting started flow for the EVM kit. So I'm gonna set up the project here, just call it my EVM kit app for this example. This is going to clone the template repository. We'll go ahead and install all the dependencies and then we'll dive into the contracts section of the repository, deploy that smart contract to the X1 network and then we'll plug it into the front end. So just copy this command from the documentation, run it in your terminal. This is going to create, it looks like I have a new version here, but this is gonna create the actual project is gonna clone the template repository. So we'll go ahead and change directories into this and we'll open this up in our text editor here. All right, so now we've got to open. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open up a new split terminal. We'll click this little split button here. We'll first swap into the application directory on the left-hand side 
and we'll swap into the contracts directory on the right hand side. So now on the left hand terminal, we have application on the right hand, we have contracts. We're just going to install the dependencies on both sides. I'm using yarn. You can use NPM. I'm just going to go ahead and run yarn, install the dependencies in the application and install the dependencies in the contract side as well. So while that's running in the background, you can see we have a simple smart contract here where we have a read function, a write function and event. The great thing about KEVMs is that all of the behavior of the smart contracts that you write, all of the tools that you're familiar with, you can use those kind of no matter what in the EVM environment. So you can deploy to Ethereum, you can deploy to Polygon ZK EVM, you can deploy to X1 ZK EVM, for example. As you can see here, the second step is we're gonna to connect to ThirdWeb. So we'll go over to the ThirdWeb dashboard, connect our wallet here. From the ThirdWeb dashboard, just quickly go ahead and create an API key. You should keep your secret. I'm just gonna leak mine for the purpose of this tutorial. Let's just give it a name of OKX X1 unrestricted web access, that's all good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy and paste the client ID here. We're gonna go over to the application side of things, head into the example, make a copy of this file and rename that just to .env. And as you can see up the top couple lines here, we have the public key and the private key. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy the client ID into the public key here and then copy the secret key into the secret key and just save that file. So you can see this is grayed out because you don't want to commit these to a uh, Git or commit them to you know, any kind of version control. You want to keep these values a secret. So that's why it's stored in this .git ignore file in the environment variables files here. So what we're going to do next is we're actually going to jump into the contract side of things. So we'll open up the contracts directory, open up the contracts directory within that. And then you can see here is where you would write your Solidity smart contracts. So you can put whatever you want here. I'm just gonna keep this as is with a simple greeter smart contract so we can demonstrate some read and write capabilities. From the contracts directory, what we're gonna do is within the package JSON, you can see a couple of scripts in the contracts directory. So we have test, we have build, we have a local node, and we have deploy. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to actually build the smart contracts. You can see the compilation process using hard hat and then we're actually just going to go ahead and deploy with this command here so we can select the x1 chain and go ahead and deploy our solidity smart contract to the x1 chain so first let's run npm run or in my case i'm using a uh, yarn so i'm just going to run yarn build what this is going to do is run this command here in the package JSON script section. I'll just go ahead and zoom in for you so you can actually see what's going on. The build command is going to run the third web CLI under the hood, which is essentially going to detect, hey, you're actually using hard hat for this project. It's gonna go ahead and compile it. And then once that project, that process rather is done, you can see we have the artifacts folder here. We have the cache folder here. We can actually go ahead and see all of the ABI. You can go ahead and see the bytecode and everything necessary to go ahead and deploy your smart contracts to any EVM compatible chain. So once that build process is done, you actually don't need to do this step. I just wanted to kind of show you uh, the different processes and scripts available. You can go ahead and run yarn deploy. This again is going to actually build your smart contract first to make sure it compiles and then give you a link where you can deploy your smart contract to any EVM chain via the third web dashboard without any scripts or putting your private key into this repository here. So you can see this link gets spit out. Let's go ahead and open this up in our browser. This is going to send you to a page where you have this network slash chain selection option. So from this, as you can see, we currently have the Polygon ZK EVM testnet selected. What we're gonna do is we're going to simply search up for X1. So you can see we have X1 testnet here. Here is all of the details available for the OKX X1 testnet. Just to guarantee this is actually correct, you can head over to the okx.com slash x1 uh, website here and click start building. Here is the network information. So you can see chain ID is 195. Here is the RPC URL, network name, token symbol, and block explorer. Just make sure that it all matches up just to kind of double check from your end if everything looks all good. So what we'll do here is we can actually maybe modify the RPC URL just to kind of demonstrate what information is mapping up in these fields. So let's change the RPC URL to the one recommended on the actual OKX documentation. We'll click update network. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to swap on over to that X1 testnet here. 
So we can swap on over and this is going to prompt us in our MetaMask wallet. In this case, you can use whatever wallet you want. You could even use the OKX wallet if you want to go full OKX mode. Let's approve this adding to adding the network information to our wallet. And then let's go ahead and swap on over to that X1 test network. So then as you can see in the top right, we actually don't have any OKB. So when we go to deploy this, it's not gonna work because we need to pay a gas fee, which in this case is going to be an OKB to actually perform this transaction. So let's give our little example here for the constructor. Let's just say, hello world is the greeting and we'll go ahead and click deploy now. You can see we actually don't have any funds available. So what we can do is we can click this get OKB from the faucet, which doesn't seem to be working, but this is luckily available for us in the documentation as well. So from the OKX docs, go to the faucet tab, get testnet OKB from the faucet here and click this URL. And then let's go ahead and get some OKB on X1, copy and paste your wallet address, which you can grab from MetaMask or whatever wallet you're using, paste that into this field here, Make sure I'm not a robot. Uh, this is, oh, there we go. <laughs> Let's drag. Oh no, oh no. Maybe I am a robot. This is tough. There we go. All right. So we have successfully beaten the robot challenge. We'll grab our 0.2 OKB and then we're ready on the layer two environment. If we go back to third web here, should now see this reflected in our wallet balance. We now have 0.2 OKB and we can go ahead and safely deploy our smart contract onto the X1 network. So you can see here, we have funds loaded up into our wallet now. We're gonna go ahead and perform that contract deployment transaction. It's gonna cost us around 20 cents in the OKB token, it seems. So let's go ahead and confirm this. And then we'll do the kind of second optional gasless step to actually add this to the dashboard in case you wanna revisit the ThirdWeb dashboard and kind of add that visibility into the ThirdWeb dashboard for you to kind of come back and revisit this over and over again. You don't have to do this step if you don't want to, but it's just handy in case you plan on using the ThirdWeb dashboard a lot. So as you can see, the transactions were very, very quick, nearly instant in just a couple seconds for those to go through. And we've now successfully deployed our smart contract to the X1 testnet. From the front end side of things, if you go into the application directory, you can go into the const directory within that, open up the chains file, and you should be able to just import the X1 testnet. So at the time of recording, it's actually not just yet available in this chains package. Hopefully by the time you're watching this video, you'll be able to just type in X1 or uh, something along those lines to actually define this in the chains package. Just right now, it's not available as I'm recording this, but I did find the chain information from this repository on GitHub. So I'll leave a link for this in the description if you can't find it available in the chains package. So you can kind of follow the same steps that I am in this video. So rather than importing it from the chains package, what we're gonna do is we're just going to copy that chain information, replace this Mumbai here with that chain information. And just for the production environment, when you actually go ahead and deploy your application to things like Vercel or Netlify or something like that, you can also set the chain information in this production chain variable here. So down the bottom, this is going to set in a development environment. It's gonna use the top network information in a production environment. It's gonna use the bottom network information. For us, it's the kind of exact same on both. So what we can go ahead and do now is give it a quick preview. So we run a terminal swap on over to the application directory. And for me, I'm gonna run yarn dev. For you, you can run npm run dev or pnpm run dev, whatever you're using. This is going to kickstart our project at localhost 3000, as you can see here. So let's open this up in our text editor here. And as you can see, we have a wallet connection option here. So let's go ahead and connect our wallet. We can use MetaMask. You can configure any wallet uh, kind of configuration options you want in this pop-up here. So for me, I'm just gonna connect my wallet. This will also prompt users to swap on over to the OKB and add that wallet information or the network information to their wallet so they can swap on over. From the contract interaction tab, you'll see we have nice little loading states. We read the state of our smart contract into this variable here. We can also go ahead and initiate transactions from the wallet to the smart contract that we deployed. So let's go ahead and say, hello, YouTube, set that greeting. This is gonna prompt users to sign transactions on the smart contract on the X1 test network. Go ahead and confirm this transaction. And this will be reflected almost immediately as these transactions go through in one or two seconds here. So you can explore the different features, explore the documentation for yourself with that 
explored. Hopefully we went a little fast. If you want to go more detail on the EVM kit, if you found that interesting, I have another video on my channel it will be linked in the description. If you want to go a little bit slower over the details of what's covered in this EVM kit and how you can use it to build Web3 applications on any EVM compatible chains like the X1 chain that we walked through today, that will be linked in the description. With that said, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.